a party? Please, 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 I beg of you, it's going so well. Yeah, so well, your neighbours complained about the noise. How often does a Tassie footy team play Mount Thomas High? Yeah, there are noise pollution laws, mate. Today was a first, you'd think he'd give it a rest for once. All right, mate, what's your name? Truck. Sherman Ruggles. All right, now look, your neighbour's main beef is the loud music outside, so if you switch that off, maybe he'll be satisfied, OK? Yeah. Yeah, sure, OK, see ya. Right. Hey, Shrug, no, 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 no. you know what? Why don't we give you a hand? So who won? Oh, look, it, it was a good will game, you know, win, lose, who cares? Because you've always whipped, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey, I'm the real winner here. My party is going off. You all right? Do you think that'll keep Num Nuts happy? Oh, we'll go talk to him. You might have to turn the music down inside as well, eh? Oh, come give us a break. Everyone will go home. Shh. Do you guys hear something? Oh. We'll just be kids making out after luck. Are you all right? Please help me. Beck? Do you know this girl? Yeah, Beck Cleary, what's happened to her? Alright, mate, thanks for your help. That's alright, you're safe now. Don't just take your time. They wouldn't listen to me, they just kept going. What did they do to you? They raped me all the time. <laughs> Come on, mate, I left my fags in the car. Mate, I've told you ten times no, all right? No one is allowed to leave, so just stay where you are. There were six of them. I didn't want them to. Can you give me any names? I couldn't see. No one would help me. We're going to help you. We're going to find them. And when we do, they will be punished. What if it's an emergency? Yeah, what about a heart attack or You're something? not having a heart attack, so just go and sit down. Go on. Or what? Well, the young constable here will arrest you for obstructing police. Just do what you're told. That is a bit restless, eh? I had it under control. Are they all in there? there? Seemed to be a lot more when we first arrived. Some must have taken off when we were out the back with the victim. Parties always die in Mount Thomas, but not mine. Not mine. I was the man. I mean, this joint was on fire. How inconsiderate of Miss Cleary to ruin it by getting pack raped. Rape? Yeah, sure. What would you call it? Look, you didn't see the way Beck was dressed. What's your point? She came here to get nailed. I mean, she practically had a sign on her forehead saying, do me. Oh, I see. So she deserved to get raped because she was behaving provocatively. <laughs> My mum owns a shop, right? She doesn't advertise and then complain when customers turn up. You listen to me, you little scumbag. Now, you're going to start... We've got another call out. I believe it must be a full moon or something. Can I take Joss? Well, have you finished in there? Not quite. I thought you guys could finish it up. Well, you're going to have to wake up, Evan. We're in the middle of a major investigation. Right. Shrug, what we need to know is, did anyone pay particular attention to Rebecca at the party? Hey, hey, I'm the host, right? I was too busy hosting... <laughs> A young girl, a guest in your home, has been attacked, held down and forcibly raped by a pack of animals. Now, how do you think she feels right now? Do you think she's enjoying herself there at the hospital? Do you think she's laughing while they comb out her pubic hair and take swaps for semen and photograph her bruises? Well, do you? No. No, I don't. So this motel guest... Sarnoff, Eric Sarnoff, room 16. Right, so he put the hard word on you, Miss Harbour. You knocked him back, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Well, I thought he had, but then I heard him trying to break in just now. I yelled and he took off. Leanne, you're sure that it was this guest? Well, I had a look around and I saw his door closing. But you went out. What about your husband? Martin and I have split up. Yeah? You're surprised? Well, you know what he was like. I couldn't take the compulsive jealousy anymore. What, well, you're surprised he agreed to go? Actually, he was okay with it in the end. You recognise when it's over, it's over, eh? 
We'll be having a chat with Mr. Sarno. Okay? <laughs> You've got to be joking. She's a dog. You watch your mouth. So you deny making advances to Miss Stratton? Uh, well, maybe I did, like, think she'd be worth a roll, but then I came to my senses, huh? I, I, I didn't try and break in, jeez. Can you prove that? <laughs> hey, babe. Tell them how long you've been here, eh? Um, two hours. I'm a three-hour booking. <laughs> If it wasn't desperate, Eric, then who was it? Her ex-husband, Matt Martin. No, Leanne doesn't seem to think so. No, last time we dealt with Martin, he was completely obsessed with Leanne. I can't believe he accepted this split. Yeah, well, some guys know when to give up. You're referring to me? No, I'm just talking about the case. No, you're talking about Susie. Well, you reckon I should just walk away? Well, if Susie's asked you to walk away, then maybe that's exactly what you should do. You don't know what you're talking about. Just tell us what you can, Beck, in your own words. And they covered my eyes. And were laughing. I screamed so loud, and they turned the music up and up and up till I couldn't even hear myself. I was so scared. Before they turned the music up, did you hear any of their voices? Did they call each other by name? I don't remember. Hi, baby. Oh, you must be Mrs Cleary. Fiona. Is she all right? She's going to be fine. She's a fighter, aren't you, Beck? Well, she's been sedated, so... Been through a lot tonight. Mum, they ripped my skirt. Get you another one, baby. Why didn't anyone help me? No. Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to be Paris Hilton? Okay, come on, I'm serious. What's your name? I can be whoever you want me to be, honey. All right, look, hey, can you just please stay in your groups, please? All right, otherwise we'll start all over again. Okay, stay in your group. Come on. How's it going? Not good. They're not being very cooperative. Is that right? Yes. And your name is? Fern Thompson. Mm hmm Your address, Fern? 16 Akaba Close, Mount Thomas. Age? 18. Date of birth? 10th of November, 1988. Oh, hang on, that makes you 15. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say 88? I meant 85. What's going on? Ross? Have you seen Daniel? Daniel? Daniel Curtis, my stepson. I'm here to collect him. It's not a mess. No. So where's Daniel? I'm here. What's going on? You do know this Rebecca Cleary? Yeah, sure. So, Daniel, who was she talking to? Oh, that'd be me. When, mate? Uh, up until I left, about an hour ago. Just before the approximate time of the rape. <laughs> I didn't rape her. Right, but... Nobody said you did. Just tell us the last time you saw her. Uh, well, Beck wanted to go outside for a smoke. You know. I didn't, you know how the smell makes me sick. And um, I was feeling a bit off anyway because other people were smoking, so I went for a walk. And I got back just now, saw the cop cars. Go, I can't believe it. Did you see if anybody else went outside with it? Yes or no? Come on, Daniel, you're supposed to be her friend. Don't hold out on her now. Glenn went with her. Glenn Peters? The captain of the Tasmanian footy team, he's billeted with us. How well do you know? As well as you can get to know anybody in three days. Can you vouch for his character? Oh, yeah, we both can. Glenn's a top guy. He wouldn't have done this to Beck. Boss? Glenn's father is an Anglican minister in a parish just out of Burnie. He seems to have been taught all the right values. His name's not on the list. Seems he's done a runner. Oh, don't say it like that. I mean, if you knew Glenn as well as we did, you wouldn't suspect him. Right. Well, we'd better find him. Mm. 
He's definitely not in the house, boss. We've checked everywhere. We'll check again. Tell Jones he can let the rest of those kids go as soon as he's got their details. Right, eh? Peroni, out of here. Yes, boss. Well, there's a thorough search of this yard. Yeah, OK. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Right. The victim's recollection is still very sketchy. Apparently she was jumped from behind and the offenders took turns raping her. So this all happened out here and there were no witnesses? Well, in there, apparently. I'm to confirm it. Hey, boss, PJ! Glenn, is that you? Well, what happened? No, I'm not, I don't know. I just wake up and I head. And Beck. Beck. Something's happened to Beck. We have to find her. We have found her. Is she okay? We're at the back, just sitting on the bench. What were you doing? Just talking. This group of guys come out of nowhere and grab us. What guys? Sorry to interrupt, senior detective. I have Mr. A. Burrows here. Hi. What's going on? What's the story? And so you would be? The uh, Tasmanian coach. I represent the players. All right. Well, then you'd better take a seat. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we were just asking Mr. Peters here about the strangers that came out of nowhere last night and attacked him. I didn't know them. They must have been gate crashers. So you got a look at them? No, they, they got us from behind. Well, how can you be sure you didn't know them? Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, teammates wouldn't do that to each other. Um, <laughs> Mr Burrows, it'd really be preferable if you didn't speak. Well, I'm entitled to speak. I'm his coach. On the footy field. Not in here, all right? OK, so the strangers jumped you. What then? Oh, I could hear Beck screaming. Yeah. It's I, I nearly got away. It, they whacked me on the head and locked me in the shed. Glenn, did you hear anything after that? A scuffle. A Beck screaming. And then I guess I passed out. All this went on and you didn't see one face. It all happened so fast and it was dark. It definitely wasn't anyone at the party, though. I don't know who it was, but I do know who it wasn't. Come on. That's feasible. Is this the no football or whatever rape a woman defence? No, now you're putting words in my mouth. It's a party full of footballers, a girl's pack rate. You join the dots. No, not just footballers. And Glenn Peters said there was gate crashes as well. Where are we? The coach has given us a list of all the Tassie players and where they're billeted. We're going to bring everybody who's at the party in for interviews. Well, question them by all means. Just don't expect the truth. Does that include Glenn Peters? You think Glenn is covering up? If he is, he's a great little actor. Well, let's see if anybody else saw these alleged gate crashes. There were gate crashes, according to Glenn. Well, what does Rebecca Cleary say? She has no idea who raped her. Now, Rebecca, you mentioned a hat. Can you describe it? Um, soft. Black polo face. A black beanie. Yeah. They pulled it right down and um, dragged me into the shed and couldn't see. And what about when the offenders left? Was the beanie still pulled over your face? I just laid there, you know? And then I realised why it was so dark, and I, I pulled it off. What'd you do with it, Beck? I don't know, I threw it away. I knew Glenn would have tried to save me. What, you, you didn't know? He means, didn't you realise that Glenn was trying to fight the offenders off? I, I, I couldn't see. I mean, everything was spinning. I could only hear myself screaming. Did they hurt him? He's OK. He's pretty worried about you. It's cute. Hey, baby girl. Boys are still going to like you. He kissed me. What, you were, you were kissing just before the attack? Yeah. 
just before, just before everything went black, they, they pulled the hat down over my head. Mum, don't. Sorry. You want to get back to your beautiful self, don't you? Crime scene haven't found a beanie, black or otherwise. Can we send some uniforms out to look? Yep, sure. Susie, you get out there and give crime scene a hand? Yeah. Take Evan with you. Uh, we can't spare two members on a Sunday. We're short staffed as it is. Hey, Benny, if we find the beanie, it'll be worth it. That's right. You're right, I'll go. Jones is tied up looking for Martin Stratton anyway. Well, no, he won't be long. You've you got a string of footballers to interview anyway, haven't you? Hey, Amy. Yeah. It'd be very handy if we could eliminate some of these boys. How soon do we get a result on the rape kit? Forensics are working as fast as they can. That's all they'll give me. Right, sooner the better, eh? Can't keep these Tassie boys in the state forever. Oh. What's up? Last from my son, Josh. He's got this father-son weekend. He can't go if I'm not there. Well, you should go. No, he's in Perth. Take some leave. Have a holiday. You really want me that far away? In that room, thanks. Found him. This is harassment. What am I even doing here? When you thought that you were losing there last time, Martin, you behaved like a complete goose. Well, that was before. I've accepted it's over. I'm moving on. You've changed that much? Yeah. You're not keeping your eye on her, checking out if she's seeing someone else? Is she? Right, so you are interested in what she's doing? No, I'm just making conversation. You'd better be telling me the truth, Martin. I am. Good. Just stay away from her. It's over. You need to let it be and just get on with your life. Okay? Right, that's it for now. Daniel. Hey. You'll be fine. I don't know what else I can tell her. Glenn said that the males that raped Rebecca, that they were gate crashers. Oh, yeah? Did you notice any uninvited guests? Well, no, I wasn't there when it was going on. Yeah, before you went for a walk. No. What, mate? Well, when I left the party, I noticed a carload of idiots turn into the street. Did you get a look at them? Well, no. When you're alone at night, you don't make eye contact with a group of roughheads in a hotted up car. Can you describe the car? It was noisy. Had one hell of a sound system. That's all I can tell you. All right, Daniel. Thanks a lot. It wasn't so bad, was it? Peter, I'll show you out. Uh, just one more thing, Daniel. Did you uh, notice any of the boys at the party last night wearing a black beanie? Oh, yeah. Nearly everyone's got one. Well, PJ said that Beck remembers chucking it when she came too, so give me a leg up. Just um, move around that way. Ah, oh, there it is. We wanted the search of the crime scene, not a reenactment. No, um, we found the beanie. Good. Peter's been hanging out for that. Yeah, let's go. How many black beanies would there be in Mount Thomas? Mm, it'd be nice if it had a name tag. Forensic might be able to get DNA from it. Only obviously got DNA from suspects that we compare it to. PJ, we do have suspects. Yeah, over 40 of them. We really need to narrow them down. Yeah, well, there's one who stands out from the crowd for me, and that's Glenn Peters. At least we know he was there at the scene with Beck. His story checks out. We'd never get a court order for a DNA sample. Well, we could re-interview him. I'd like to talk to him again. For what purpose? Jonesy, you and I will show this beanie to the footy players. For what it's worth, now, you need to follow up the gate pressure angle. It is a waste of time looking for invented gate crashers. We need to investigate all leads. Well, what about Glenn? Forget about Glenn. We've got nothing on him. Not yet, we don't. This is really just an informal visit, just to say that you're OK. I've still got a bit of a thumper, but I'll live. It's more your emotional health we're concerned with, really. Isn't it, Constable Rana? Yeah. Yeah, a girl was um, brutally attacked. It's got to be a lot for you to deal with. I'm not thinking of myself. All I care about is Beck. Strange you haven't been to visit her then. I can't face her, okay? Can you imagine how it feels knowing I let her down? 
And seeing you may just bring back all those horrible memories for poor Beck. Your presence could even trigger a new memory and things could all suddenly fall into place. Hey. Wouldn't want that, Look, would you? you can't walk in here and start accusing him like that. Look, you don't have to answer it. Don't say anything. Surely you've got nothing to hide, Glenn? Look, if you don't leave now, I'll make an official complaint. Why are you running a vendetta against Glenn Peters? I'm not running a vendetta, I'm just pursuing inquiries. Mr Burrows is considering laying a harassment complaint on behalf of Glenn Peters. He hasn't been eliminated as a suspect yet. So why didn't you inform me that you wanted to re-interview him? Glenn's 18. He doesn't need a parent or a guardian present. We've cooperated with the police in every way. Not quite. He claims that he was just talking to the victim and she says that he was kissing her. What I've been told is that she was asking for it. By whom? But nothing. Just idle. Nothing excuses rape. Nothing. I'm glad we got that clear. Uh, Senior Detective, this is uh, Fern Thompson and her mother. Fern, I believe, has something to tell you. Is it true that Daniel Curtis is in trouble? Why do you ask that? Because he deserves it. He acts like he's so much better than the rest of us. Fern! Well, he does. Have you come here to give or receive information today, Fern? Hmm? Look, she knows Beck Cleary. They were best friends at one time. Not anymore. She's a slut. Fern, can you tell us anything about who Beck was with just prior to the rape? Hmm, I don't know times and that, but I can tell you about the last time I saw her. She was with Glenn Peters. He plays for the Tassie team. Yeah, we're familiar with Glenn. Yeah, well, they were both after her. Both? Him and Daniel Curtis. Daniel as well? <laughs> yeah. He asked Beck out last week, but she gave him the flick. When Glenn came along, she was all over him like a rash. How'd Daniel feel about that? Well, he wasn't giving up without a fight because he wouldn't leave them alone together. And then what happened? Mm, they all went out the back. Are you sure about that? Yes. Is there any chance that Daniel left through the front door by himself? No. The three went out the back together. I remember thinking how pathetic it was that Daniel wouldn't take the hint. She can't even be sure of the time. Look, Daniel liked Beck. She knocked him back. He was upset. You're calling him a liar. I'm not calling him a liar. I'm just suggesting that maybe he hasn't told us the whole truth. I've always found Daniel to be particularly honest. This is all hearsay, isn't it? Well, we've got Fern Thompson's statement, but it'll have to be corroborated. It won't be corroborated. Daniel was brought up with integrity. He was taught to respect women. I presume you had a warrant to take that. Daniel's hat? Are you sure that it's his? Grace embroidered this little fish on it. Well, it was found at the crime scene. Apparently, it was used to cover the victim's face during the rape. Yeah, it's mine. Mate, do you want to explain why Rebecca Cleary was wearing this during the rape? I did go out the back with Glenn and Beck. Um, we were mucking around with my hat and Beck put it on. Then she started kissing Glenn. And I finally got the message on the dock. So then you went for a walk? Yeah, I didn't want to stick around after that. You sure you didn't go inside and organise some of your mates to teach her a lesson? No. I don't have those sort of mates. Besides, I don't even play football. So why did you go back to the party? Well, I knew Tom was coming to get me. So, let me get this straight, Daniel. You had the hots for Beck and she rejected you. Your hat was used in the attack. No one can vouch for where you were at the time because you were on a mystery walk. And last night when we spoke to you, you lied to us. Now, what are we supposed to think? Well, I might as well not say anything. You've already tried and convicted me. Clear yourself, mate. If you know something, just say I it. I don't know. I wish I did. What about your mate? Glenn, was he in on it? There's no it to be in on. <sighs> well, can I go now? I'd like to go see Beck. She must be feeling like hell. Yeah, sure. Very good. Concerned for the victim. You must be innocent. Oh, 
Come on, PJ. You know Tom better than I do. How am I going to play this? The evidence should lead us to the truth. We can't be concerned with consequences. That's easy for you to say. Besides, are you saying that you'd let a, a rapist go free because it was related to Tom? Not in a million years. Far too many rapists get off as it is. You know, six bastards have just ruined that young girl's life. She is on a lifetime now of dysfunctional relationships and nightmares, and they are not going to get away with it. This is sounding personal for you. I'm just doing my job. No one actually saw him on his walk? No. So it's still only circumstantial? Yeah. The next thing to do would be get a voluntary DNA sample. I don't think that's necessary. Not until we've verified this with the girl herself. Has anybody done that? Not yet. Then I'll do it. Well, do you think that's a good idea, given your personal involvement? It might appear that you coerced her into clearing Daniel. Yes, it might. Which is why you should probably come with me. I'm sorry to have to take you back to last night, Rebecca, but uh, there are a few things I need to ask you. OK. Is it possible that Daniel Curtis is one of the boys who assaulted you? No. Not Daniel. He's a, he's a sweetie, just like his mother was. Rebecca? I already told the police. I don't, I don't know who it was. You're not as convinced as your mother, though, are you? Rebecca, I don't want you to think of me as Daniel's stepfather. I'm a policeman. That makes you my first concern. Well, Daniel was mad at me. I mean, he didn't say anything, but I could tell. And I suppose I can't say that he wasn't one of them. I have to know the truth now, Daniel. I told you the truth. Not the whole truth, and that was really stupid. Oh, okay, so I'm stupid. Don't take that tone. I need to know about your relationship with this girl. Were you angry with her? No. No, I like Beck. But you, uh, wanted to have sex with her? <laughs> I was attracted, OK? It doesn't mean I took without asking. Don't you believe me? Circumstantial evidence is mounting against you. I can't help that. Look, it's not looking good. I didn't do it. <laughs> what more do you want? A voluntary DNA test would help. No way. What? Look, I shouldn't have to prove to you or anyone that I didn't do this. You have to understand that I'm trying to help you. Look, if we can't eliminate you, we have to investigate you. That's time better spent looking for the real offenders. Daniel, I am trying to help you. Yeah, well, don't do me any favours. Special request for you, Evan. The uh, Mount Thomas Motor Inn, Leanne Stratton's got the spooks again. Right. Can you come, sir? Yeah, sure. No, sorry. I need Susie here. Why? Interview footballers. You'll have to go alone. I'd come out of the shower and he was watching me through the window. Can you describe him? No, he ran off. What about your guest in room 16? He checked out this morning. It can't have been him. Okay. I'll have a look around. Thanks. You'll be fine. Just stay inside and lock the door. Mount Thomas 208, Mount Thomas 900. Mount Thomas 900? But there's no sign of Leanne's stalker. I'm just going to take one more look around and then head back. Copy that, 208. Oh, Suze, has been there? Uh, no, it's gone out, why? Oh, I was just wondering if there's... You there, Tuzeroi? The problem, Susie? Yeah, his radio's just gone dead. Mount Thomas 900. Mount Thomas 208, Evan, you there? Mount Thomas 900, Mount Thomas 250. Ben, are you there? We've got a problem.
You know what the funny thing is? I agreed to the separation. You know, I was sure that Leanne had missed me, want me back. And she would have too if you hadn't have come along. Mate, last night was the first time I've seen Leanne for, for months. I missed on purpose too. Why, mate? I saw you and Leanne touching each other up! No, mate, we weren't. Ah. Mate, I would never touch another bloke's woman! Uh, no, you wouldn't. Not anymore, anyway. Because you, pal, you are going to get one right in the balls. At least don't move! The weapon down. Oh, yeah, right, or you'll do what? Martin, whatever it is, put it down now! You shoot me, will you? Put the weapon down. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to put a nail right Martin, through put it. it down. I'm going to do it now on the count of three. One. Two. Ben! I couldn't do it. Have a problem, Sergeant? No. Look, you're not a cowboy, Stuart. You never have been. But if you can't use your weapon when required to save someone's life, then you're no use to me in the job. Think about it. No sign of him at his house, Sarge. About to talk to some of the neighbours. Can I have a word? Right, copy that five Sergeant? nine. Keep me informed and uh, widen the circle. What about? I think you can guess. Where do we start? Go ahead. Country boy, so he's used to roughing it. Not here. What the hell was going on back there? I was doing my job saving lives. Not mine, you weren't. I had to save myself while you just stood there. I was following procedure. No, you weren't. You froze, Ben. Face it, you lost your nerve and I could have been I killed. I knew what I was doing. Maybe you didn't lose your nerve at all. That wasn't attempted suicide by cop. That was attempted murder by cop. What possible reason could I have to want you dead? You kidding? You know how she feels about me, and that just burns you up, doesn't it? You're way out of line. Way out. And don't ever assume to know what my feelings are. Just get out of here and grow up. Thank you. For what? For confirming my faith in your good judgement and supporting me. I'm not confirming anything, Ben. And now that that's out in the open, we can come back to where we were. I said no. It is over between us. There's no more sex, no more romance. We had a fling and it's finished. Let it be. Get on with your life. Now, after you check the railway and the bus stations, uh, call in and what's the name out of the highway server? Doreen. That's the one. Which highway server? It's, Look, um, why don't I go with him, Sarge? I don't know yep. where I'm going. Thank well, you. What about me? Mount Tom's police. Yes, Leanne. No, sorry, we haven't found him yet. Are you all right? Ben, Leanne Stratton. Sounds like she's in trouble. Look, just stay inside and lock the doors, OK? Isn't she at her parents? No, motel. Kelly, come with me. Someone is on their way now. Mrs. Stratton! Might be one of the guest rooms. Let's have a scout around. Come on. 
Mari. Is he dead? Yes. Is this Leanne? Leanne, are you there? Leanne? Did you find her? Sarge. She's gone. So am I. Sarge. That's it. Sarge. Ben, where are you going? Probably halfway to Melbourne by now. If you haven't got anything constructive to say, then just shut up. Just don't take it out of me, okay? Guys, that's enough. Tell my kids I love them. to Mount Thomas, I thought I had everything. Career, and then bam, I was demoted. I lost my wife, my kids, everything that mattered to me the most. And, you yeah, know, I've been lonely and empty at times and I've hurt a lot of people. You haven't hurt me. That's good. You know, you reminded me of what I used to be. Anyway, it's time for me to get on with my life and stop trying to be the copper that my granddad was. You're a good copper. Yeah, I was. But Ben Stewart's not anymore. My heart's not in it. And the boss is right. I mean, if I'm not prepared to use my weapon in the line of duty, then I'm not much use. I'm sure that the boss didn't mean... And I am not prepared to take another human life. I'm definitely not my own. I left a note for you to give to my kids. And then the phone rang, and it was Josh. That's where I belong. 
Why am I too late? What for? Well, Ben said that... Uh... OK, are we all here? Good. Sergeant Stewart has something to say. I've resigned. As of now. Ben, no. No, no, it's a good thing. I'm going to Perth. I'm going to be with my family. And do what? I don't know. Um, probably got enough money in my super to cash it in and start up a Jim's mowing franchise or something. A bit of a contrast to this job. No, uh, what? I could actually see you doing that. Come here, you. Hmm. <laughs> That's good. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I miss you. I miss all of you. Good friends. Um, I'm sorry, Ben. PJ, you might want to hear this. Go. Okay. Take care. The doctor said a whack on the head can make you forget things. He also said my memory might come back. Dribs and drabs. And that's what's happening? Just a bit. It's probably not important. No, no, no. You, you let us be the judge, eh? When those guys grabbed me, I, I sort of doubled over. I saw someone's feet. Not too exciting, I know. Well, it might be if you can describe the footwear. They were wearing old-tool basketball shoes. A couple of flashes down the side. Mm -hmm. What colour? Red and white. He was knocked out. But how reliable is this delayed memory rubbish? Well, it does back up the rest of our evidence. I mean, he was rejected by the victim. His hat was used in the attack. He didn't have an alibi. I mean, the first time we spoke to him, he lied to us. And he refuses to take a DNA test. I'll do it. Oh, come on, come I on. I said, can't. I'll do it. I'm perfectly capable of bringing in my own stepson. Were you wearing those shoes last night? Yeah, of course. Daniel. Daniel Curtis, I'm arresting you for the rape of Rebecca Cleary. I must inform you that you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? You must be joking. Shoes and belt, please. What? Just do it, Daniel. Sign here. I beg of you, it's going so well. Yeah, so well, your neighbours complained about the noise. How often does a Tassie footy team play Mount Thomas High? Yeah, there are noise pollution laws, mate. Today was a first. You'd think he'd give it a rest for once. All right, mate, what's your name? Truck. Sherman Ruggles. All right, now look, your neighbour's main beef is the loud music outside, so if you switch that off, maybe he'll be satisfied, OK? Yeah. Yeah, sure, OK, see ya. Hey, no, 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 no. You know what? Why don't we give you a hand? So who won? Oh, look, it, it was a good little game. You know, win, lose, who cares? Those have always whipped you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, no. Hey, I'm the real winner here. My party is going off. That's better. You all right? Do you think that'll keep Num Nuts happy? Oh, we'll go talk to him. You might have to turn the music down inside as well, eh? Oh, come give us a break. Everyone will go home. Shh. Did you guys hear something? 
just be kids making out half their luck. Are you all right? Do you know this girl? Yeah, Beck Cleary, what's happened to her? All right, mate, thanks for your help. That's all right, you're safe now. Don't just take your time. <laughs> they wouldn't listen to me, they just kept going. <laughs> what did they do to you? <laughs> they raped me all the time. <laughs> Come on, mate, I left my fags in the car. Mate, I've told you ten times no, all right? No one is allowed to leave, so just stay where you are. There were six of them. I didn't want them to. Can you give me any names? I couldn't see. No one would help me. We're going to help you. We're going to find them. And when we do, they will be punished. What if it's an emergency? Yeah, what if I had a heart attack or You're something? not having a heart attack, so just go and sit down. Go on. Oh, what? Well, the young constable here will arrest you for obstructing police. Just do what you're told. That is a bit restless, eh? I had it under control. They all in there? It seemed to be a lot more when we first arrived. Some must have taken off when we were out the back with the victim. Parties always die in Mount Thomas, but not mine. Not mine, I was the man. I mean, this joint was on fire. How inconsiderate of Miss Cleary to ruin it by getting pack raped. Rape? Yeah, sure. What would you call it? Look, you didn't see the way Beck was dressed. What's your point? She came here to get nailed. I mean, she practically had a sign on her forehead saying, do me. Oh, I see. So she deserved to get raped because she was behaving provocatively. <laughs> My mum owns a shop, right? She doesn't advertise and then complain when customers turn up. You listen to me, you little scumbag. Now, you're going to start... We've got another call out. I believe it must be a full moon or something. Can I take Joss? Well, have you finished in there? Not quite. I thought you guys could finish it up. Well, you're going to have to wake up, Evan. We're in the middle of a major investigation. Right. Shrug, what we need to know is, did anyone pay particular attention to Rebecca at the party? Hey, hey, I'm the host, right? I was too busy posting... <laughs> A young girl, a guest in your home, has been attacked, held down and forcibly raped by a pack of animals. Now, how do you think she feels right now? Do you think she's enjoying herself there at the hospital? Do you think she's laughing while they comb out her pubic hair and take swaps for semen and photograph her bruises? Well, do you? No. No, I don't. So this motel girl... Sarnoff.